Hello, Adam again with another Squarespace tutorial. Uh, this one is how to help you uh, do some simple text and image um, adding, editing, and deleting, and moving around, and kind of just getting used to the Squarespace page editor. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go into our site, and every page is going to have, on most of these templates, three different areas. You've got, you can edit and remove your background image, um, edit your main text, or edit your footer. Some templates will have, you know, a pre-footer, some won't have a background image, um, it kind of depends, but all of them have your page content. That's where you're going to put your main stuff. And when you initially start out, uh, there will be pre-filled content in here. I tend to delete all of their preset pages and just start from scratch. Um, so that's what I'll be showing you. So they always have one block that says right here. Don't worry, that's not going to show up on your site. Um, notice that it's in gray, and when I go uh, into it, it starts going away. So let's get some dummy text here. There we go. Okay, so entering text is if you want it as a first block is quite just as easy as clicking in there entering whatever text you want um, and then it kind of behaves sort of like a word document uh, you can take out some text and enter in bullet points when you hit return it will automatically fill another one hitting return and return again will end your bullet points um, you can use a numbered list. You can format your text in your text paragraphs in different sizes. So you've got your heading one, heading two, heading three, and block quote um, choices. Note that that does do a whole paragraph. So if you want to do a heading, you'll have to have a hard return after it right there. Um, we should do another one to get a space so that we get a bit of a setup. You can have things centered, flush left, or flush right, flush left. What's some of that? We can make links simply by highlighting the text. Click on your link. Um, one thing to note, there's a couple different ways to make links. Um, you can insert a file, which you would upload from your computer, or choose a file that you've already uploaded. Um, and I always like to, let's go ahead and do this, add a file, and it'll bring you to your finder, and this is where you'd add your PDF um, files and things like that. Let's just add an easy one like that right there. Files and external content, external meaning other website links, I always tend to uh, put in new windows. And the reason for that, and there's arguments as far as um, usability both ways, but I always find that I don't want people to have to hit back to go back to the content they're reviewing if they just want to, hey, I want to quick check out what this link is and then maybe get back to what I'm reading. That way it opens in a new window up here and it never closes the main site. So whenever possible, I always click open in a new window. Um, if you're going to regular content, that's the only time that I don't. So let's edit that. Um, the only page that I have to link to right now is this page itself because I don't have any more. Otherwise, if you go to content, you're linking to other pages within your site. Um, so all of your site pages will be listed. You can choose any one of them um, by name and then just link to that page. That's the only time I wouldn't open a new window because then you're going from your site to your site. Um, so it should be in the same window. But if we're doing it, and notice I didn't hit save after I added that file, so I never actually did it. But Open in a new window and then... There's no save button or anything on here, so you just click off to the side. If your link turned blue um, or whatever 
color you've chosen for your links in your style editor that I demoed uh, a couple tutorials ago, you'll know that it works. Um, also, you can save your content, click on it, and test. Um, notice again, I always tend to have two browsers open. Um, again, something I mentioned in and something I'm not doing right now, but something I mentioned in one of my early tutorials, because your website will look a little bit different um, in a regular browser or when you're not logged in. So it's always good to look at it in. Oops, oh, it's going to be capital. Uh, I was good to look at it in another browser as well, because um, you won't see your content over there and whatnot. So if I save this content that I've got going on right now, just this text, come over here, hit refresh, it'll immediately be there. I can test out my link. Notice that it opens in a new window so that I can just click back here. Um, stuff like that. So that's basically everything on the text editor uh, side of things. You can, you know, Go italic, bold, um, this stuff, do, undo, redo, um, pretty basic stuff. One thing to keep note of, anything that you do do that you're like, hey, you know, I don't really like that, undo, redo, isn't working for you, cancel. will let you discard all of your changes and revert to whatever your last save was. Um, or you can save those changes cancel is canceling your cancel so it's like oh wait I didn't want to actually discard my changes but I don't want to save yet because I'm not done so I'll go ahead and cancel my cancel otherwise you always have to hit save to change your saves or change your uh, edits to your page and that's pretty much it for the text editor um, again you can adjust what all of these styles look like in your design style editor which I co uh, covered a couple tutorials ago so how would I add um, an image or more text to this. Um, we'll stick with more text right now because here's something that I don't really like about Squarespace. If I want to add another text block underneath this, say one that's floated right and only has a headline, that's great. It's a separate text block. Um, until I save it. And then if I go back in and edit, it automatically becomes part of this text block. It automatically merges text blocks that are on top of one another into one another. And that doesn't seem like a big deal because I can still, you know, do kind of whatever I want with this, except for the fact that if I wanted to move this headline over and create a two column layout or take it and drag it and move it up here. I can't do that um, because it's now part of this text block. And I'll show you why real quick. That's kind of an important thing to keep in mind that it'll merge the two text blocks. Um, because Squarespace has this fantastic, you can move things wherever you want. option. So what I did here is I put a spacer in between those two and that treats them like separate text blocks. Now I can't hit delete and go back up to there because I have a spacer bar or I just used a spacer. You can use any other block that's not a text block to separate them. But now if I hold in the corner of this text block, I can drag it into these different spots. Um, so I can embed it in this text, which you'd never want to do. I can create a full two column grid where now I have one, say little blog article here. I have another one here. I can drag it and move it up above both of them. I can drag it and put it on this side. Anywhere that that black line goes, your headline is going to go. Um, one thing to keep note when you are dragging, this created a second column over the entire page. So this spacer bar kicked over as well. And 
you can create a second column that would just be over the text. And the way to know that is, notice that black line gets shorter. There it's covering the spacer bar. There it's covering just the text. So now the spacer bar is still full width. I've got two columns of text. So if I added something else like an image, it'll go full width. Whereas if I have a two column width going the whole way through, um, if this would have been a full two columns, I would have had to choose which column I wanted to add this to. Um, I'll cover the blessings of the spacer bar, if you will, uh, in another tutorial, probably the next one that I'll do. But it really is probably the best thing. I don't like having it on my site and using it to space things out, which is what they intended it for. I use it to break up the pages so that I can move things around. And then I generally drag it into the trash so that I don't have extra spaces in there. It depends upon how much white space you want on your site. But now I can come up, if now I decide, hey, I want this image to be only in this first column, I can drag it until that black line just covers the bottom of the first column. Now my image is only in the first column. If I want that image to be a little smaller, I can add a spacer bar underneath it, drag the spacer bar up to just cover the size of that image, and then drag in between those two to size my image horizontally. You can crop your image um, vertically right there, but there is no horizontal crop. You have to size with a spacer bar or whatever other content is here. You can change the width of your columns. Anytime you have two things next to each other, if you hover on the border with your mouse, you're always going to get that black line with the double arrow. That means that you can move stuff horizontally to resize. Anytime you have a hand, you can move stuff around or drag it to the trash. Anytime you have just a black line, you add content that would go, oops, so you'd add content that would go the width of that black line. So if I wanted full page, I'd have to go up to the top here um, to get full page. That would be first column. That's why there's two of them right next to each other. So those are the key to moving things around and placing things. Um, the biggest thing to watch out for is merging your text into another one because if I accidentally put this text up here, merge it in, I can't get it back out once it's merged without deleting it and redoing it or canceling my save. Um, so those are some things to be aware of on adding uh, text and images and moving the spacer bar around. I will do another quick tutorial just on the spacer bar um, so you can get used to that, but that will get you started. And remember, always hit save when you're done. Look at it, refresh it in another browser, and you'll see all your changes to make sure that they're how you want.